What is going on, everybody? Welcome into the highlight, a super serious business podcast for all of you super serious business people. And today I'm joined as always by my business partner and co-host, Austin Lynch. Austin, how you doing, man? I am doing good. Chandler, how are you doing? I heard that your daughter starts kindergarten tomorrow. Tomorrow, that, yeah. yeah. How's that? That's true. You know, are you feeling good about that or... You, if you're on the YouTube channel watching right now, you can see my face. It's uh, I'm smiling to I think keep myself from crying. I she's my little girl, man. She's our our oldest daughter, turned yeah. five uh, a couple months ago, and yeah, she's she's going to school, which is uh, it's crazy. I I a lot of emotions about it. I will tell you, nothing yeah. makes you feel older, and you're probably experiencing this now. Miles is is almost a year old. Uh, nothing makes you feel older than having a kid get older and start to do things in life. Like she plays soccer. Now she rides her bike with her friends and goes on spend the nights and, and all the things. And so it's, I just remember doing that as a kid and now Man, I feel yeah. very old. Comes uh, full circle. You're the one it. that's giving the permission. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm starting to think oh ahead to God. like high school and everything else that happens. And, uh, it's, it's crazy, man. I, I will say it's uh uh it's surreal. That's at the end of the day, super surreal. Man. Well are you ready we'll for Miles to, to uh, uh start school three years from now? Four uh, years from now? No. No, I'm not. He he's fully crawling now though, so he is mobile hundred percent. And if he wants to come to you or to anything else for that matter, he uh he's gonna mm. do it. So yep. you gotta start baby proofing the house. But oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> The sockets are perfectly baby finger size. So yeah, you got to be careful. <laughs> and like baby height, they're like where they're positioned yeah. on the walls. Oh. They are at the perfect spot to just yeah. let a kid barbecue themselves. <laughs> it's the perfect storm. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, uh, it's kind of funny. You asked me about that. It's like we planned it this way. Uh, your today's topic is uh, work-life balance and I need to ask you how you're doing because you're coming off the back of like a four day bender. I don't know where you've been. I haven't heard from you in four days. I think you went to Chattanooga. <laughs> I was watching your yeah. dogs for a couple of days. How, uh, yeah, let's talk about work-life balances as entrepreneurs and dads to young families and all that stuff. Cause I think, I think people out there that want to be entrepreneurs or that are, um, you know, I literally just got off a sales call with a person that is running a, um, candle business and it's, it's, it's still a startup. It's a couple years old and she's sort of transitioning and getting bigger every year. And she's feeling some pressure of like trying to wear all the hats and do all the things and, and work-life balance came up. So I'll kick it over to you to start with, man. What is your opinions on work-life balance as an entrepreneur? Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you can't push yourself so far to the point where you're you know, ready to break. You have to build that time in as you go. And so, yeah, we, we just got back from a, you know, long weekend celebrating my wife for her birthday and it was really great. You know, it, it, what is hard is obviously you have to do prep work on the front end of something like that. If you don't want to just be completely underwater when you come back, um, and so, you know, I did a good bit of that, but I mean, even then coming back, it still does feel heavy. So I know today's a long day. I mean, today's the first day back. So, uh, kind of anticipated some of that, but, um, yeah, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's worth, you know, playing catch up because we got to go back to where, uh, my wife and I met in college. We got to go kind of explore the city again. It's been a few years since we've done that, go to our favorite restaurants, do all those kind of fun things. And yeah, it's just great memories made with the family. And I think that's important, especially like, you know, like you were saying, I mean, everything moves so quickly and he's still yeah. so, I mean, he's still a baby and that's not going to last for much longer. So, um, yeah, just not to have get another too... baby and then you can, uh, you know, oh, they just, they keep coming and you're, you can never get rid of them. Oh man. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know that I'm ready for that yet. I think that might tip the scale on the balance. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I, I don't know. This is my, like we talked about before, second business. And I think I, I like to think I'm better at the work-life balance thing now. Uh, it's funny because with the first business, I was basically like, everything gets put to the side so that this thing can make it. Um, 
family, friends, physical health, educational things, yeah. intellect, all the things. You know, I think in our next episode, we're going to talk about our favorite books. So a little, little teaser for, for next week's show. But yep. I will tell you that it didn't work for me. Like, it's funny. We got to a million dollars in revenue. So maybe it worked to a certain level. But ultimately, we ended up crashing that business because we didn't have any sort of balance with anything. You know, I, I gained. I went from, man, I was like 215 pounds and I got all the way up to 270 in six years. Like, just ballooned up. Got huge. You know, I'll, I'll see if I can find a photo for the for the YouTube channel. But, you know... I, I stopped hanging out with friends. Like we would deliver catering orders to, to Keeneland and Kentucky football games and all those things. I didn't do anything fun. I literally just worked, went home, spent the bare minimum time with my family and then went to sleep and then went back the next day and did it all over again. And I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. Honestly, even sitting here right now, I think there's, there's seasons. And I think I think I had to pay that price for education. I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know how to build a business. I didn't know how to do anything. And so I had to go and work inefficiently and trade all that time to get all that education. But I think knowing what I know now, if I turned around and did the same things with this business, with what we're doing, that would yeah. be unwise. Like that wouldn't make a lot yeah. of sense. Well, especially now that the family's growing and like, you know, business is going in lots of different directions and, you know, it, you're, you're, you're asking yourself for like a crash, I guess, if you, if you go too far, but yeah. Well, Julia threatened me with, uh, death <laughs> if I didn't mess around. I mean, we, we had a lot of conversations, uh, when we were starting this business almost a year ago, September will be a right. year for us. And I remember her and I talking and she was very concerned about, you know, are you going to spend too much time on this? Are you going to be gone again? Are you going to work until midnight every night and not hang out with us? And you know, I'm, I'm happy to say that in the last year, I think I've done that maybe it's definitely not more than 10 times. You know, that's yeah. a, that's a big thing for us. Um, yeah. no, I agree. I think there are times when duty calls and you have to step up and you have to do the long stretch, but yeah, I think, you know, less than 10 times over the course of a year is pretty great. And I, you know, we have always been fairly intentional about, you know, not loading ourselves too heavy, um, and, and spreading that workload out. We talked about that on an earlier episode, just delegating and not loading yourself to the point of exhaustion. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's super important. And certainly as your family's growing and you know, your, your precious time to make those memories are, uh, it, yeah, it's shorter than it seems, I guess. Yeah. I will say too, though, you know, it's, it's a hard trade to make. It's not easy because, you know, getting on a sales call or going on a work trip or doing those things, those opportunities are fleeting too. I mean, you don't know yeah. if you're going to get another at bat. And so it's a constant game of playing trade-offs. There's times where I'm going to miss a soccer game or miss a practice or not be able to do something that I want to do because I've also committed myself to this. I think it comes down to, you know, as, as responsible adults, you've basically assigned yourself responsibilities and you have to make sure they get delivered at yeah. the end of the day, only you were going to be able to know if you're in balance or not. I think what's really helpful for me is to really sit down. I like to be all introspective and get, get somewhere deep and quiet <laughs> my back porch in the morning with some coffee. And I, uh, I like to, I like to, I like to get quiet and really ask myself like, what is wrong? Like, what is like, where am I actually missing the mark right now? Yeah. And if I, if I, if something keeps coming to the forefront, you know, if I do that a couple of times and the same thing keeps coming up at some point, I'm going to stop sweeping that issue under the rug and I'm going to have to go address it. Like for me and you, yeah. I think we talked about our diets on episode one, which I don't know, mine's yeah. going okay. Cause you're still going okay. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's going okay. It's going okay. I, you know, it's funny. There's seasons where I'm like not working out as much as I want to be. Yeah. Um, but it's a trade-off because I know, okay, I'm backed up on work. I don't have time to go work out right now. I've got to make that trade off and it sucks at the end of the day. I hate it. Yeah. I think about missing that rep and I just feel like a failure almost. Yeah, I, I get that too, but you know, it's not like if you miss one, it's, it's really don't miss two in a row. You know, I feel like that's yeah. the most important thing is if you do miss one, like don't let it break you to the point of not going back the next day. Um, because you know, 
four out of seven days, five out of seven days, whatever is, is better than, uh, you know, skipping several. And then all of a sudden several turns to three weeks of doing nothing. So, yeah, I, I agree with that. I also think it's good to have people around you that are wired differently than you because they help bring a whole new perspective to what you're trying to get done. Um, if you are, if, I don't know how you are. For me, I would live under a bridge in a 2004 Corolla uh, to build this business, and I would forsake everything else. But when I'm like really being my highest level self, I know that's not yeah. a very solid life, and it's Good sort idea. of a dangerous plan. And right. so my wife, Julia, is always here to remind me uh, that other things matter, and it helps pull me out. But that, I don't know. I Again, I'm, I'm hedging a lot this episode. I feel like a certain level of obsession is required yeah to get a business off the ground dude i mean we're trying to freaking yeah. launch a thing from nothing it's, it's bleeping hard <laughs> yeah and i would i would agree that like it's it's almost like if you're willing to dedicate the time it's easy to put it on the pedestal and sprint towards it 24 7 and focus on nothing else it's more difficult to understand that it's a big priority in the midst of other big priorities and knowing how and when to you know, shift those around. I think that's a lot more difficult and thus it's easier to kind of not do. I mean, obviously when you have such a heavy weight from one activity, like building a business, it's going to put strain on the others naturally. So finding the balance and finding the spot in which all of it can work together and not break the priorities. And like you said, spending time, uh, quiet in the morning over coffee like that's perfect that's the time when you can really think about what are the priorities and then like you said am i dropping the ball on these as i'm looking at them now that i've just said these are the priorities like you know you kind of set that and then you look at what you've been doing over the last i don't know three months and say yeah have i hit the mark on these am i focusing too much on one thing over the other and if so yeah you got to make the adjustment and yeah, it's hard, but if you are true to your priorities, then you'll do them, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if not, they'll slip. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's well, funny. I uh, I just turned 32, and I keep thinking that at some point, I don't know, you hit a, a milestone or you hit a finish line, and it just sort of yeah. like a thing gets easier. And... It, it never happens. You never hit the end zone. You never reach the finish line. That's what I've sort of over the last yeah. two years come to realize. And it it's sort of depressing if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also really easy to like, oh, al- like you said, always see the finish line, but never really feel like you've crossed it. But what I try and do is, I don't know, whenever you feel that way, I guess, looking back on like what you've built to date and just saying, you know, a year ago, would I be proud of this? And if so, then like, boom, there you go. Problem solved. Feeling better about yourself. Uh, Move on. But if not, you know, again, you got to address that. So, yeah. Well, a year ago, we didn't have sweet polos like you've got on now. You got some high beam swag. It's looking good. It's a crispy brand new polo. First time wearing it. Are we, are we sponsored by Nike or is that we pay for that. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to try and keep that uh, behind the microphone because, as you know, there's no free shout outs on this show. So there's no uh, free ads on the advertising I, guy I show. I let, let the logo slip on accident there. But uh, yeah, no free shout outs. Sorry, Nike. We're going to have to get you some black like gaffers tape from Brandon next time so we can like tape yeah, that up. Right. You know, he's already complaining about your light setup. So we'll get your. Just Sharpie. Oh, you're going to do it live on the show? Sharpie it out? That's <laughs> just <laughs> what a move. Speaking of high beam marketing, I, uh, I, we got to pay the bills here and you know, Austin and I sponsor this show ourselves. We have nothing else to sell except marketing services. And, uh, if your small business needs help with marketing, go over to highbeammarketing.com, fill out the contact form. And we do something pretty cool, which is a marketing audit. You know, when I was a small business owner, when I was, I still am, but when I ran the barbecue restaurant and I was busy doing other things than marketing all the time, uh, we did what we called random acts of marketing frequently. And that just means you waste a lot of money on billboards, you waste money on radio ads, you waste money on Facebook ads. You know, we hit the little blue boost button under the Facebook picture every once in a while, which, you know, always cost me money. I probably wasted a hundred grand 
maybe 150 grand learning how to market my business. And that was a very expensive education. And I wish a company like ours would have been around and I could have trusted them to come in and, you know, come alongside us and teach us and execute at the same time. And I think that's what we do differently. So if you need help with marketing, highbeamarketing.com, fill out the form. We'd love to talk to you. So with that being said, we'll end today's show with everybody's yeah. favorite segment, the Austin grab bag. Are we going serious today? Like I like, or are we, are we going the nonsense? Right? Well, I think we're going to go serious because you said something earlier that piqued my interest and I've got a little bit of a rant to get out. Uh oh. You you talked about the Facebook button that just says boost. I know yeah. people use it all the time. Easy. I got to address it. I've got to address it. It might work for you. You might boost and then you might see a boost in your performance on your website as well. But here's the reality. That's a very small fire that you can light. Whereas when you work with someone like Highbeam, you work with someone that's a professional on the space, you get an access to a whole other suite of tools that most people just simply don't know about because all they see in their app is the blue boost button and they think that's ads, that's advertising. Uh, and sure, it, it sort of is. It's it's the first toe into the water. But uh, if you want to unlock the good stuff, you've got to reach out to a professional. So again, like you said, Chandler, highbeammarketing.com, reach out. We're going to help you get around the blue button. We're going to help you get the better tools so that way your business actually grows and it's not capped by the blue button. Well, I think it's good. I, I wasted many a dollar clicking that little blue button. It was uh, yeah. it was like the little easy button from those Staples commercials yeah. back in the day. Makes you feel like you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Well, you know, random acts of marketing will cost you money every time. So I told Austin we'd keep it short today since he's a little, he's a little, little bit of a wuss and he's a little tired coming off a of big road trip. <laughs> so we're gonna keep it short hours away <laughs> we're gonna get out of here well i think you i think you might have burned on the, the midnight oil a couple times down there in your old stomping grounds so <laughs> all right well i appreciate you being on the show appreciate you guys listening we will see you next week see ya <laughs>